And a happy Tuesday to you. It's Wake Up with Anchi Valley for the second day of the work week, the 15th of September, 2020. Eric Grandstrom filling in for Dan Kuntz. Uh, one more day today, tomorrow, and then Dan's back on Thursday, I believe, unless he just decided to take a permanent vacation. We'll see about that. Coming up this morning on Wake Up with Anchi Valley, of course, you see the haze again. We actually, some locations here in North Central Washington, had a little light rainfall overnight last night. Did it improve our air quality? Well, we'll find out with the newscast coming up in just a few moments. Also, of course, the uh, governor uh, may be loosening some restrictions here for Chelan and Douglas County. Sports news, the Mariners had a doubleheader makeup yesterday with the Oakland Athletics, one of the best teams in football. Uh, we'll get to the words from Seahawks coach Pete Carroll on Sunday's win over Atlanta. Also, a little fun coming up later on this morning. I'm going to take you to the Grandstrom house to do some cooking. We'll do that later on. Right now, we'll start things off, though, with a look at what's happening around the valley, a literal look at what's happening around the valley. See, if you could just barely make it out there at the upper end of that screenshot there from our cross camera, brought to you by SkyFi Wireless Network and LocalTel. See the blue skies? Yeah, it's there. It's been there all along. We just haven't been able to see it because of all that gook that's in the middle. Now, hopefully, we'll get some of this gook to go away here in the next uh, couple of days. We'll talk more about that with your forecast coming up in just a moment. But yeah, I know, I know it's still not the greatest outside our Wenatchee Valley. All right, to camera two, we're gonna get any better view. <gasps> oh, look, you can actually see more than five blocks. Now this looks like we must be up at uh, Badger. Okay, yeah, okay, uh, Rude Canyon uh, up on top, higher elevation, getting out of the smoke and uh, you can still see it on the horizon there. Good morning to uh, those of you who, you know, the folks that live up on Badger, that live up on the Waterville Plateau, they're up way earlier than the rest of us because they got stuff to do. They got animals to feed, they got stalls to muck out, and everything else. So good morning to the Plateau, good morning to Badger Mountain, good morning to Rude this morning. Okay, camera three, where are we going now, Megan? It's always uh, an interesting one. Oh, looking down at Pibus Public Market this morning from our camera right in downtown Wenatchee on top of the Cascadian. And yeah, you can see, boy, normally we just have a gorgeous view of the valley this time of year, but with the smoke laying in thick, uh, you can't even hardly see the river that's in the background behind the Publis, uh, Pibus Public Market. See, that's six times fast. Uh, but uh, good morning to the folks on Worthen Street. All right, camera four, where are we going to head to now, Megan? Oh, we're going to look the other direction <laughs> because I'm sure a lot of our cameras probably show nothing but smoke. This is looking up the avenue, uh, the uh, Coast Wenatchee Center Hotel on the right, uh, just on the lower right-hand side of the screen there. You can just barely make out a little bit of the pack, the Performing Arts Center. And boy, won't it be nice when we can finally get back to normal and get to see some fun things at the pack and just go out to a movie and go out to eat and not have to worry about masks and all of that stuff. Oh, the days. Speaking of going out to eat, we're going to talk about that coming up in just a little bit with our obscure holiday for this 15th day of September. First of all, though, let's see what's happening as far as the weather is concerned. Brought to you by Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. You see a little bit of rain there coming up on Friday. And yeah, there is a little lightning with that too. So we'll hold our collective breath as far as that is concerned. But as far as the forecast from the National Weather Service, widespread haze and smoke again today. Uh, highs getting up around 74 to the, uh, the winds northwest about five. Not much to speak of here today. Widespread haze and smoke again tonight. Otherwise, uh, cloudy skies and going to keep things pretty warm. The low tonight about 64. The winds out of the west at 5. Tomorrow we'll see smoke and haze again. A little sunshine filtered in. And 81 for the high on Wednesday. As we get through the rest of the work week, clouds moving in uh, late Thursday. And then on Friday, look at that, 60% chance of rain. And we'll just hope that maybe the cooling trend will keep us away from the lightning and we'll be uh, doused with some rain to clear out all of this gook we have here as far as the smoke is concerned. And then sun returning 
by the weekend. The high temperature yesterday in Wenatchee, by the way, was 70 degrees, 57 the overnight low. Uh, record high temperature for today, 92 set in 1995. The record low was 40 chilly degrees in 1969. Got an early start to fall, that's for sure. Uh, normally, we're at 77 for the high and 53 for the low, so we're still uh, warmer than normal for this time of year. Still stuck, even though there was some light rain that fell in some areas, no measurable precipitation still are still uh, still over two inches less than what we should be at this time of the year. Sun rose this morning at 639. Sun will set tonight at 711. We'll take a quick break. Come back here on Wake Up at Anchee Valley. Oh, 57 degrees is our current temperature. Oh, yeah. And uh, before we get too much farther, uh, found this on uh, windy.com. We use this in the evening newscast with Grant. Um, this is kind of a cool graphic here. I, I mean, it's sad, really, because this is showing our CO2 levels. So this is basically the smoke and the gook we're talking about and it looks like this nasty blob amoeba that's been formed around western washington western oregon central washington central oregon and but the good news is look by thursday it starts to move out of our area and then hopefully knock on wood on friday uh the smoke will be gone and we'll have a nice clear weekend we'll cross our fingers on that all right we'll take a break come back and uh, bring you the latest local news speaking of air quality still not the greatest we'll have more on that coming up next on wake up anachi valley for a tuesday pibus public markets motto is where community meets whether it's people, you know, enjoying an event or they meet a colleague for coffee and whip out their laptop and are able to actually do work here. Having quick and reliable Wi-Fi is one of the things that makes Pibus such a great community hub. It just contributes to the welcoming place that we want Pibus to be. I'm Allie and fiber keeps people connected and that's what Pibus Market is all about. Hi. My name is Manuel Navarro, Chief Operating Officer at Columbia Valley Community Health. Patient safety is our top priority, including providing care that just can't wait. With enhanced safety precautions, we want to ensure you that we're able to continue providing safe and efficient in-person care at our clinic. From in-car check-in, ongoing screening, immediate rooming, your family can get the safe care that they deserve here at Columbia Valley Community Health. Just about eight minutes past the hour, another smoky start to a day here for the Wenatchee Valley and for most of the Pacific Northwest. We're at 57 degrees. In for Dan Kuntz, I'm Eric Granstrom with your latest local news here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. The Wenatchee Valley remains socked in by hazardous smoke generated by our own regional wildfires and those burning all across the Pacific Coast. Air quality in East Wenatchee is measured by monitors that count the concentration of small particles per cubic meter of air has been hazardous for anyone to breathe since roughly two o'clock Saturday afternoon. Now before that, it was merely rated unhealthy. This morning, the level, as you see there, 413 for East Wenatchee. That's still in the hazardous range. At Leavenworth, which usually holds a pocket of good air in smoky conditions, quality remains less hazardous, but still unhealthy. Reading there this morning at 204. Same story for Quincy, where Columbia Basin winds can usually be counted on to disperse bad air. Unfortunately, numbers in Quincy this morning are in the hazardous range at 413. Now, while these conditions are in play, you're asked to stay indoors if you possibly can. If you must venture out, an N95 filter mask, not the typical cloth mask used to block the spread of COVID-19, is highly recommended. Well, fire crews say the Cold Springs fire that devastated Okanagan County last week is now about 50% contained. Several homes and outbuildings were lost after the fire erupted September 6 on the Colville Indian Reservation and roared south in heavy gusting winds. Blaze now consumed almost 189,000 acres and led to the death of a one-year-old child. Firefighters say they've controlled the northeast portion of the fire line, which was their main priority. On September 7th, that firestorm spawned a second grassland blaze in neighboring Douglas County, the Pearl Hill Fire. That is now almost 90% contained after damaging the town of Bridgeport and forcing major evacuations. Between the two, almost 413,000 acres of land have burned. Well, in times of crisis like this one, North Central Washington looks for ways to help. Charitable groups say what uh, fire victims can most use right now is financial donations. 
One great place to focus your giving is the NCW Fire Relief Fund, managed by the Community Foundation of North Central Washington. Another option, the River Warrior Society, is aiding displaced families on the Colville Reservation. Donations can be made to both those organizations at the web addresses on your screen. The massive fires have also caused danger for pets and livestock. Now, through the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, you can offer materials from the list of needs shown here, like pet food, collars and crates, or livestock bedding materials. Financial donations can also be made at the web address listed at the bottom of the screen. Finally, Jacob and Jamie Highland, who suffered major burns and lost the life of their toddler son in the Cold Springs fire could use your help. Both remain hospitalized and undergoing surgeries. Their families have organized this GoFundMe page to help pay for their medical costs and related expenses. Well, the Washington State Patrol's top cop sees no co-connection between the state's massive wildfires and organized terrorism. Chief John Batiste on Friday helped shoot down rumors of political activism intentionally set fires which have burned since Labor Day. He said State Patrol has made two arrests of suspected arsonists, but despite fast spreading rumors on Facebook and elsewhere, his agency sees no organized effort to cause such destruction. So we've arrested two individuals, as I indicated, within Pierce County, both in the valley setting fires on one on Highway uh, 512 at uh, State Route 7. A trooper actually witnessed that uh, taking place. The one in the valley on uh, State Route 167 was witnessed by citizens who called it in. A trooper responded, could not detect that there was actual uh, nefarious activities occurring. Shortly afterwards, a uh, five police officer came along and witnessed the individual uh, setting the fire. Uh, and that person along with the other person was taken into custody. Again, we have no uh, indication that there's a linkage between those two individuals. We know that there's a lot of rumors spreading around on social media about uh, an organized effort to uh, set fires, but uh, we have no knowledge of that. We've not been able to uh, discover any of that in conversations throughout the fire community and amongst law enforcement. 12 minutes after the hour here on Wake Up with Anchee Valley, again in for Dan Kuntz. I'm Eric Grandstrom as news continues. Exercise clubs and other indoor fitness uh, studios in Chelan and Douglas counties can now begin limited reopening under new COVID-19 guidance uh, released by Governor Jay Inslee on Friday. Uh, counties like ours in a modified phase one had been barred from allowing gym services to help prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Inslee's new rules say gyms can operate personal fitness and training programs, small group fitness classes, and practices for certain low and medium contact sports. All indoor services are still subject to social distancing restrictions. Well, speaking so of COVID-19, consideration, we've been able to do this to help uh, these businesses and people who need to exercise. So that means facilities like gyms and yoga studios and indoor sports facilities can open for personal fitness and training. But this is with a limited occupancy to ensure that we have appropriate social distancing. We're glad to be able to make that progress. Excuse me there, Governor. Uh, speaking of COVID-19, Chelan and Douglas County's transmission rates didn't budge much from one week to the next. Data from the Chelan Douglas Health District shows for the week ending September 9th, the rate of new cases was about 237 per 100,000 members of the population. That's not much change from the 256 per 100,000 reported the week before. The counties need to achieve a case rate of 25 per 100,000 if they're going to uh, progress to a new phase of reopening. We should see new numbers on Wednesday this week. 19 people in the two counties have passed away from the disease. Well, curbside pickup at all 30 public libraries in North Central Washington, which was scheduled to resume today after a six-month closure in Chelan and Douglas counties, has been shuttered due to the hazardous or unhealthy air quality throughout the region. NCW Libraries closed uh, all its branches and drop-off services last spring on public health orders from the states, but has gradually reopened for curbside service in the last month or so. The library still plan to re revive the service in the Wenatchee Valley, so be sure and watch their Facebook page and other uh, website for updates. In the meantime, mail order for books and library materials will still resume this week.
Well, Governor Jay Inslee visited the east side of the state last weekend, meeting with citizens of Bridgeport and the Colville Confederated Tribes. Both the town of Bridgeport and the uh, Colville uh, Reservation have been seriously damaged by fires uh, that broke out over the Labor Day weekend. On his stops, the governor announced an executive order providing cash assistance to fire-affected residents through the state's Family Emergency Assistance Program. And he tied the devastating fires to ongoing climate change, just as he did this Friday in his news conference. These are not wildfires in the sense that they're caused by some natural process. This has just never happened in the state of Washington before. This is not natural. This is not an act of God. This is not something that happened because of evolution or meteorological conditions that would have been here without, without our industrial base. This has happened because we have changed the climate of the state of Washington in dramatic ways. I'm 69 years of age. I have never woken up with smoke three out of the last five years choking my, my grandchildren. I've never seen ash in our cars before. How many people have seen major fires in Sumner and Bonnie Lake? This is an entirely new situation and it is caused by climate change. And so I'm, I'm pointing this out because I am frankly not accepting of allowing people's houses to get burned down anymore. I've been governor for eight years. I've seen too many people who've lost their houses. I've seen too many couples standing in the ash of their homes crying about their losses. That's not acceptable in this state. And we should rise and attack these fires at their source. And I hope that we will do that. Just about 17 minutes past the hour. Be sure and tune in for the NCW Life Evening News tonight at 5, 6, and 10 o'clock for the latest on the fires, air quality, and much more. With Grant Olson back in the chair tonight, I'll be handling sports. Uh, Dan Koontz, I think, will be back on Thursday here on Wake Up with Anchee Valley. Uh, in the meantime, if you know of some news that's uh, breaking or something that we might need to follow up on, be sure and get a hold of us. Multiple ways to do so. You can email us directly at news at ncwlife.com. That kind of sprinkles through all of our inboxes in the newsroom. So uh, we'll keep an eyeball on that. Also, you could uh, call us directly at 888-NCWL. That's 888-6295. You can also reach out to us through our Facebook page, and we hope you like us and follow us while you're there. You can do so, just go to facebook.com slash ncwlife and send us a message directly through Facebook. We'll take a quick break here on Wake Up with Anchee Valley. Coming up next, sports news and uh, fun today with our obscure holiday, including a trip to the grocery store and the grill. That's all right here on a Tuesday edition of Wake Up with Anchee Valley. love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Nineteen minutes past the hour here on Wake Up with Angie Valley for this Tuesday, 15th of September, 2020. Payday for a lot of folks, so it's a happy day. It's uh, also a decent day if you're a Mariner fan. They split a doubleheader as we get to sports news here on the uh, Wake Up with Anchee Valley with the uh, one of the best teams in baseball yesterday, Oakland A's, winning the opener. Seattle was down 5 nothing before coming all the way back to win it 6-5. Here's how they did it in the bottom of the sixth in a seven-inning contest. Maybe take a nap. Here's a slicing drive into the gap. Get down, it does. Here comes Irvin. They're going to bring him. Here he comes, and we get a tie ball game. Tim Lopes, three doubles today. We get a tie ball game at 5-5. Five, five. Ball four. Mariners 
take the lead six to five. A bases loaded walk by Soria. RBI Kyle Lewis is third in the day. Dave Sims and uh, Mike Blowers on the call there on Root Sports. Seattle got home runs from Jose Marmaleos and the first career Major League Dinger from Jose Torrens. Uh, and thank goodness for Kyle Lewis. He continues to shine with a homer in game one and a brilliant catch in game two. Take a look. Fly ball, deep right center field, and Loriano's going to watch it get out. Home run, Kyle Lewis, two run shot. And here come the Mariners. They've made this a 5 4 ball game. Home run for Lewis is 10th. RBI is 25 and 26. Boy, he's pumped too. As well, he should be. He hit the daylights out of that ball. You don't like it. It breaks an 0 for 13. But a one run game. Breaking ball. Long run by Lewis to the gap on the track. Jump in. Wow, he made the catch. Oh, baby. Kyle Lewis with a stellar, stellar effort. Saves big time damage here in the first. Wow. He had it measured all the way. Took it to the fence. Get that baseball and bring it back. It's 1-0 Oakland. Again, Root Sports with the action there. Kyle Lewis, that was a grand slam home run if he doesn't make that catch. Uh, Marco Gonzalez earned the win in game one, lasting six innings, allowing five runs on six hits. He struck out seven and issued only his fifth walk of the season. Yeah, one walk, everybody panics. Um, no, um, you know, it's obviously I didn't, I didn't have my best stuff. Um, you know, the cutter is, is a huge weapon for me and, and uh, just struggling to find the finish on it. So, um, you know, I battled with what I had. And uh, after I gave up the home run to Simeon, I just, you know, I thought, all right, the rest from here on out are going to be zeros. And um, let's see if the boys can come back and get a W. And, you know, that's, uh, I commend the, uh, the lineup. They really showed up and, and uh, put together some good at-bats. Good team win right there. Now, that was the opener of the nightcap ball. Oakland, however, they won 9-0 as Mike Miner pitched all seven innings, allowing just two hits with eight strikeouts. Uh, Mark Canna drove in three runs, had a homer. Kyle Lewis, a double, was one of just two Seattle hits. Mariners welcomed San Francisco into town for the first of two games tonight at 640. L.J. Newsom facing Tyler Anderson. Checking the Les Schwab scoreboard for the American League West last night. Seattle and Oakland, the only teams that played, but here's an update on the standings. The A's lead is six and a half games over Houston and eight in front of Seattle. The Mariners four and a half games back in the wild card chase. Well, Seahawks coach Pete Carroll met with the media Monday following Seattle's 38-25 win over Atlanta on Sunday. He was just as happy with his team's ability to follow protocol as he was with the victory. Well, this was a really successful first week for us um, in terms of you know, getting on the road for the first time. There's so much behind the scenes that, that you can't see in preparation and uh, you know, in, in managing the whole process. And we did a really good job with it. We made it through it and all that. We'll find out in a couple of days how we did. But uh, um, it was well done by the staff and everybody had to organize. Players went along with it. The, the, the trip worked out great like we wanted it to. It first chance for some of our new guys to get on the road with us the way we like going. And, and uh, so... Uh, the, the new experience of playing in the stadium with nobody there um, really wasn't a, a big issue. Um, you can, we can feel the, how important it is as a as a club to to you know, generate our own enthusiasm and, and energy and all that. So that's just going to be the way it is, you know, as long as the settings are like this. Uh, but it worked out fine; it didn't affect the football at all. And uh, uh, so we're real pleased with the first game. Now, Matt Ryan did throw for 450 yards, a couple of touchdowns and an interception, but Carroll says he's not worried about the stats when it comes to Seattle's pass defense in a game like that. We felt in control of the game, you know, going kind of in the middle of the third quarter, and uh, they, you know, just with the, the weapons that they have, they just forgot about the running game and just started throwing it every down. So we just we just were playing the clock and, and making sure that we didn't, you know, get them, let them get back in the game. And uh, they're so good. I mean, that's a really loaded talent-wise uh, offense, and, and 
Matt Ryan, this, that's his at his best when he's back there seeing the gun sitting back there and, and, and he knows everybody's playing zone and they're waiting it out. He, I mean, he, he can pick you apart, and he did um, to some, some extent. But as long as we controlled the clock and, and all that, everything was, you know, I don't care about giving up that yards. You know, those yards that come, they're going to get that when you're ahead like that. Next up for the Seahawks will be a matchup this Sunday on Sunday Night Football, nationally televised, 520 kickoff on NBC. Cam Newton and the 1-0 New England Patriots come to town to take on the 1-0 Seahawks. That's sports news at 25 minutes past the hour here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Another hazy day today. We did get a little light rainfall in some areas, nothing measurable but uh, probably just enough to really make your car look nasty this morning as you get out and get ready for work. We're at 57 degrees with the hazy smoke here in the Wenatchee Valley. Obscure holiday today. Uh, I, I took a peek at this yesterday, so I thought, mm, I gotta have fun with this one. Now, there were 10, count them, 10 different things I could have chose from. Let's see, it's International Dot Day. And if you don't know what that is, Dot is a book by Peter Reynolds. It's talking about uh, getting the most out of children and finding the right path. Uh, it's National Cheese Toast Day. I was close on choosing that one. Uh, it's National Linguini Day, uh, National Felt Hat Day, <laughs> National Creme de Mint Day, National Tackle Kids Cancer Day. That's important. Uh, National Online Learning Day. Of course, every day is like that for our kids right now. Uh, it's Greenpeace Day and National IT Professionals Day. Now, all of those are important in their own rank, but today is also National Double Cheeseburger Day. That hits right there for me. Uh, first person said to have created the cheeseburger was Lionel Sternberger. Now, oh, what a name like that. Really? Really? Uh, apparently he was working at his father's sandwich shop. Uh, had a hot burger coming off the grill. Prior to that, supposedly, nobody thought about putting cheese on it, but he thought, hey, I'm going to put some cheese on it. It melted and then, ooh, the ooey goodness has been there ever since. Um, I took advantage of this day, National Double Cheeseburger Day, to uh, do a little shopping and cooking at home last night. Let's take a look. Okay, for the burgers, at one of my favorite local grocery stores, this happens to be Fred Meyer, looking for burger. So that's our first stop. I like to get 80 to 85% lean, uh, 20. 15% fat because that helps it hold together on the grill and provides your flavor. And then I have to be looked into sale on some Kroger three pound packages. So here we go. Next up will be a bun. So let's see here. Da, 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 sourdough. Yeah, it looks like I'm not going to find any great pricing. So. We'll go with some potato bread. Next up is cheese. Actually, that's not bad for medium cheddar. And then we'll get a slice of Colby Jack, since it's on sale. Okay, gonna make some good old fashioned homemade french fries. So for that, just a couple of good old russets. There we go. Okay, so today is National Double Cheeseburger Day. And I thought I'd take some time to show you how I like to do it here at the homestead. Uh, welcome to the Grandstrom Kitchen, by the way. Camera two of, of course, the lovely Marion once again. Uh, so I like to do it old-fashioned style. I like to do old-fashioned uh, potatoes in the uh, frying pan. And so I use good old-fashioned russet potatoes. Nice, big, sharp kitchen knife. Make big, chunky fries. You know, we were talking about this. Who does this anymore? Who does the old fashioned fries anymore? I think, and that's the, the thing we're gonna talk about here coming up next is uh, I did a little survey and you have time right now, if you go to Facebook and search me, uh, you can tell me who has the best double cheeseburgers in town. Of course, you know, a burger by itself is great, but I like to have a little bit more than that. And so the entire experience is made a little bit better with some french fries. So, there you go. Nice cut fries, bigger size, good russet potato. And uh, I'm gonna show you a quick kitchen hack, if you, you probably already know this. But we'll go over to the fryer pan here. 
and I've got some oil in the pan. And if you take a wooden spoon and you put it in the oil and it bubbles around the spoon, see it bubbling right there? And that means your oil is ready. No need to use a thermostat or anything like that. Just use that. So I'm going to turn the fan on, so sorry for the noise. But I'm going to carefully put these in the fryer. This is fresh oil. Don't use oil that's been used 106,000 times. <laughs> like uh, some <clears throat> restaurants that, uh, you know, when you walk into the restaurant, if the first thing you smell is the oil from the fryer, that means it needs to be changed. So, now I know a lot of people will take their fries, they'll take the potatoes, they'll cut them up and then they'll soak them in vinegar, uh, they'll put them in the fridge, that type of thing. Hey, this is, I came home, I stopped at the grocery store, as you saw on the way home, and so now I've got just enough oil to cover those fries. So, go ahead and take a look at that, Marion. There you go. Nice fry going on. So, I'm going to let those do their thing. Meanwhile, we're going to make the burger patties here. So, normally I make my burger patties big enough so that I don't need uh, more than one. So, I make them thick. And I learned this from my wife. She appreciates when you take off the ring, guys. Uh, in fact, I'm going to even take off the watch for this because I might go elbow deep in this one. Um, but you saw where we got the burger on sale. 80 to 85 percent I like because it adds flavor with the fat and also won't fall through the grill. So for a double cheeseburger I'm gonna grab palm size so about like that and I'll make it a round ball first and then smash it down. Now one of the thumb uh, nails you can use too with the burger depending on how much fat there is or how lean it is that also is going to be about how much it shrinks. So you see our bun size we have here. That's a pretty good sized bun with a potato bun. I'm gonna make these burgers a little bit bigger. That's a little too big. So I'm gonna take that off. But uh, so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger than the bun. So planning for it to shrink on the grill a little bit. And I'm just gonna make two burger patties here. I've got the uh, grill already heating up. Nothing fancy here, no Traegers, nothing like that. We just got a char broil. It is uh, propane fired. Okay, so that's about the size I want. I'm gonna make one more. So again, uh, about baseball size. Wad here, a uh, burger, pad it out. Try to make it nice and round so it matches your burger bun. And make it so it's symmetrical as far as how deep it is so it has even cooking chances on the grill. Okay, now wash my hands first. How long do you keep in the fries? Cook in the fries until they turn golden brown. I will stir the fries a little bit just to make sure to get an even cook, even coverage with the oil. But those are pretty thick fries, so it's going to take a while for them to go, so no problem. Okay, so hands are clean, now I can grab, and I don't, I don't do anything fancy. I've got Lowry's garlic salt, and I'll apply a little bit on both sides. And then I will season the other side once I flip it over on the grill. So a little cracked ground pepper, fresh pepper, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. You know, everybody likes to do their own thing. Now, for the cheese and the piece de resistance, we have Colby Jack and we have some cheddar. So we'll do that once the burgers are flipped. So let's head out to the grill. Okay, so as I mentioned, nothing fancy, charbroil grill. And uh, if you've got that splatter guard, it's good with burgers especially that have a lot of fat to put it right over that splatter guard so that you stay away from flame out situations. So there you go. It's on the grill. I'm going to leave that sit for about five minutes. The temperature's already where I want it to be. And for me, I don't have a temperature gauge as you can see. I put my hand down there and when it's time to do that, then it's time to put the burgers on the grill. Let's go check on the fries. We just come back inside and put the burgers on the grill. I just want to check the fries real quick. And if I don't see a lot of bubbling, I don't see a lot of action in here. I'll turn it up just a little bit. But you can see in here, Marion, some of the fries are starting to turn brown, so that's why we stir it up a little bit. There you go. 
Now when those are done, for me, again, everybody has their own thing, I like to put fresh cracked sea salt on those right out of the fryer. And we'll put them on some paper toweling to make sure that they drain okay. So here we're gonna take the rest of this. Oh, I gotta get my special spatula for the grill. And of course, you know, gotta represent sea folks. Okay, so <laughs> let's head back outside and make sure we're not on fire. Okay, what's the biggest mistake everybody makes when they grill? They usually have people over, usually have a kitchen full of folks, and you forget what's happening in here. Don't forget what's happening in here. You spent good money on that meat or fish or chicken or whatever it is. You gotta pay attention. Okay, it's getting there. You can, you can hear a little bit of sizzle. I don't want too much flame on that. And I'm okay to let that slowly cook. You don't wanna go fast. Because you go fast, you go high flame, that means flame out. Don't want that. So once I flip those over, I'm going to put the garlic salt and the cracked pepper back on the other side. Yes, I cook it halfway through and then put the uh, accoutrement on the other side. Uh, and then once the burgers look like they're nice and done, um, I'll put the cheese on to melt, close the hatch, turn the grill off, and then get ready for the burger on the broom. So, we're back inside off the porch, which is about all of uh, 20 feet from where I'm standing in the kitchen. And again, just checking on these fries, making sure that I got good bubble action. You can see the good fry action here. And you'll start to feel with the end of whatever you're using, spoon or whatever, the fries will start to give a little bit. They're starting to give, that means they're cooking inside. And then turn the temperature up just a little bit to get them a nice fry on the outside, and then we're good to go. Okay, it's been about five minutes, maybe a little more than that. So I'm gonna check on the burgers again. And ooh, yes. I like to see the, the uh, color start coming through the top. So that means they're getting good color. Now, gotta be careful when you do this because they're gonna wanna flame up a little bit. But that's okay. I get you a nice flavor to it. Nice sear. There we go. Now I'm going to add my seasoning to the other side. Now that, again, this side's already been cooked for the most part. And I'm not putting a lot, I'm just putting a little bit of Lowry's garlic salt and some ground black pepper. Easy squeezy chicken peasy. I'm going to close that up again, about another five minutes, and then we'll be ready for cheese. A couple of things when you're cooking over the stove with hot oil, hot grease, uh, fires can happen. So number one, you want to have your handle turned away instead of out here like this, where you're going to bump into it or somebody might grab onto it. Have it uh, turned away where it's in a safe place. Also, even though if you're not using a lid, have a lid handy. So if it does boil over, it does start a fire, boom, turn it off, take it off the heat, and you're good to go. Here, so I've got some paper toweling inside a colander, and I'm just gonna try to get as much of the oil off and shake it out with my slotted spoon as possible. Um, we don't fry much around here in the Grandstrom household, so we don't have all the proper tools to be able to be dipping stuff out of <laughs> the fryer, but this will work. You know, everybody's got those fry nets or whatever else. Okay, awesome. Now I'm going to let those drip a little bit, and while I let those drip, I'm going to get some more potatoes in the batch. Again, you got to be careful because these just by nature are wet after I just cut them. They're fresh from the grocery store. So just put them in gently, carefully, so they don't splatter. And once you get a good froth boiling in there, you can put a little more at a time. But also, I don't like my fries sticking together, because you put them in there uh, too close together, and the fries will stick, and they won't get done evenly, that type of thing. So while we wait for these, this batch of fries to get nice and going in the oil, we're about ready to put some cheese on the burgers outside. Oh, here it is. Okay. Now, I'm going to take some sea salt and I can get the lid off of it. Just lightly salt these. That's it. No more. Okay, let's get some cheese on the burgers. These are done. They are, I can tell, they're at the doneness that I want. I'm going to turn the flame off. And I've got my slice of cheddar, my slice of Colby. My slice of cold bean, my slice of cheddar, and I'm going to let that sit on the grill for a moment, let it melt down. Here's one for the camera girl. Here you go, honey. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> and uh, we'll go check on the fries, and by the time we get the bun ready to go, 
We'll be ready for a double cheeseburger. Oh, hi, we're back. Um, before we get to the cheese on the burgers and the fries that are done, we want to make a little fry sauce. Easily done. Everybody knows this fry sauce technique. It's mayonnaise and it's ketchup and it's up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and stir that up. We used to love this when I was a kid. We'd have uh, ruffle ridges, ruffle, ruffle ridges, potato chips. And we'd make this goop. And oh god, we were in hog heaven. So there you go. Easy squeezy fry sauce. And I'll take a, I'll do that when we come back in. Okay, time to get the burgers. I don't like pay, uh, tomatoes or lettuce or pickles or relish or any of that stuff. Mayonnaise, ketchup, that's it. And oh, mama, don't look at this. Oh. <laughs> Melted to perfection. We'll clean, clean the grill later. Oh, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. I give you the ultimate double cheeseburger. We're going to add fries, add fry sauce, and a beverage, and we're good to go. I'm telling you, to celebrate National Double Cheeseburger Day, I've got one of my specials here. Very simple, very plain. Have a nice cold beverage. Let's do the uh, big taste test here. Burgers are sliding all over the place. You love a goopy burger. Mmm. Pull oh, out. Done to perfection. Oh my gosh. It tastes so good. So I have plenty of that friends. Mmm. <laughs> I've outdone myself even. Mmm. A little drink. And of course a little french fry with special sauce. Mm. Tonight, join the rest of the country. Have a double cheeseburger. All right, there you go. A little fun last night at the uh, Grandstrom household. By the way, I asked on Facebook, uh, both my personal page and then shared that through our NCW Life page, uh, your favorite place to get a cheeseburger in town. Uh, boy, uh, we've had 32 different suggestions come rolling in so far. Uh, I'll get you the update on this before we finish the show. But right now, the lead is for Easy's Burger Deluxe. Uh, second place, not too far behind, is Dusty's here in Wenatchee. But a lot of choices, a lot of people voting. Head to our Facebook page to find out more about that. Happy, uh, happy National Double Cheeseburger Day today. Hopefully that got your mouth watering a little bit. I'm ready to have another one, as a matter of fact. All right, let's see what else is happening on this day in history. 1954, Marilyn Monroe's most famous scene probably in her career was shot on this date in 1954 as a breeze lifted her skirt. Didn't you just love the picture? I did, but I just felt so sorry for the creature at the end. Sorry for the creature? Why'd you want him to marry the girl? He was kind of scary looking. But he wasn't really all bad. I think he just craved a little affection. You know, a sense of being loved and needed and wanted. That's a very interesting point of view. <laughs> oh, do you feel the breeze from the Segway? Isn't it delicious? Sort of cools the ankles, doesn't it? Now that was 1954. Marilyn Monroe at the time was married to Joe DiMaggio. That scene was shot in New York City and Joe was there as were a bunch of men that were ogling his wife at the time. He was not happy about that whole thing. He thought it was rather salacious. In fact, not too long afterwards, uh, Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio divorced. That scene shot on this date in 1954. Muhammad Ali. On this date in 1978, took on heavyweight champion Leon Spinks at the Louisiana Superdome. And oh, a great right hand. Oh. Terrific right high hand to Spinks, and he grimaced. When he went into the clinch, he grimaced. And he looks like he's... Oh, he really stung him. He really stung But, but they got to hand it to the, to the champion. He just... Come in, he got another right hand in his face. He's not going to be able to take much more of this as, as Ali can continue with. And Boudini is hollering. Box oh, another, another one. Another. Three right hands. He is now right on target. A left jab and a right hand. And Ali 
Adams' corner is aesthetic. Now he's corner is hysterical because they see a knockout coming. The biggest round of the fight here in round 11 for the Pablo champion. Yelling. Four. yelling. And the crowd of more than 70,000 here anticipating that Ali once again may be on his way to becoming the champion that he always was. Good, honest, Kojo scores. Ten Ali, one even, four space. The new champion, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, the new champion. Well, I want to tell you, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, you called it. You said this is going to be maybe one of the most one-sided decisions in the heavyweight ranks in some times, and that's exactly what it was. And that's what it was. Ali became the only heavyweight in history to regain his title for a third time. He would announce after the fight his retirement, then he would come back a couple of years later, fight Larry Holmes, and be knocked out in that one in the 11th round. He finally would fight for the final time against Trevor Burbick, falling in that one. December 11th, 1981, Ali left the ring for the last time after that. 56 wins, 5 losses, 37 by knockout. Uh, also on this date in 2008, the venerable Wall Street brokerage firm Lehman Brothers seeks Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, becoming the largest victim of the subprime mortgage crisis that would devastate financial markets and uh, contribute to the biggest economic downturn since the Great Depression. If you have not seen it, by the way, watch Panic, the untold story of the 2008 financial crisis. You can find it on YouTube. It's available from HBO and uh, Vice News. It's scary to learn how close our economy and the world's economy came to completely crashing down in 2008. Celebrating birthdays today. If I say Marco, you say Polo, right? Uh, 1254, Marco Polo was born on this date. No, he wasn't an avid swimmer. He was an explorer, a Venetian explorer, exactly. Uh, pioneered Central Asia and China that inspired Christopher Columbus. By the way, uh, no connection between Marco Polo and the swimming pool game, if you're curious. Uh, also celebrating, uh, well, the birth of William Howard Taft, President of the United States. He was born on this date in 1857. The 27th President also served as the U.S. Secretary of War, First Provisional Governor of Cuba, First Provisional Governor of the Philippines, and the U.S. Solicitor General. Theodore Roosevelt picked Taft to be his successor. Taft planted the cherry trees in Washington. That's one thing he's known for back in 1909. He also started the tradition of throwing out the first baseball in a baseball game in 1910. William Howard Taft, born on the state in 1857. And we're gonna also talk about somebody who's alive still. Dan Marino was born on this date in 1961. Happy 59th birthday to Dan the man. Played 17 seasons, all with the same team, the Miami Dolphins. At one point held 40 singular, uh, single season and career passing records. He uh, still holds the record for the most wins by a quarterback not to win a Super Bowl at 155. So there you go. 15th day of September 2020 here on Wake Up with Angie Valley. Hazy, foggy, and not foggy, but uh, hazy, smoky conditions again in our valley today with a high expected, uh, what was it, about uh, 80, no, 74 degrees was our expected high today. We're off to a warm-ish start, 57 in the Wenatchee Valley, and there was a little light rain that fell in portions of north central Washington. Nothing measurable, however. We are expecting a little bit better weather coming up. We'll talk about that with your forecast. Mike McNaughty has his opinion. It's straight ahead here on a Tuesday edition of Wake Up with Anti Valley. From the ocean to the mountains to the forest in between, vacation time can be a fun time. But not if your car breaks down. Call Global Car Care today. Have a service approved over $150 on your vehicle and Global Car Care will donate an oil change service to one of our local heroes at Confluence Health. Look for more incentives online. Global Car Care cares about their community. 
Boating in the Wenatchee Valley starts at Bob File Boats and Motors. Now you can fish like a pro without breaking the bank thanks to the ProMag Aluminum Fishing Boat by Smokercraft. It features a great layout with a spacious bow casting platform, huge live wells, and in-floor storage to safely stow your gear. See the Smokercraft line of boats at Bob File Boats and Motors on Sunset Highway in East Wenatchee or online at BobFile.com. Bob File Boats and Motors. So Pam, how's your mom doing? She's okay. She's struggling. She'd like to stay in her house and it's getting harder for her to do the daily chores. What kinds of problems is she having? Just basic house cleaning, you know, uh, taking care of her house, yard work, taking care of her medicine. Mm -hmm. It does sound exhausting. It is very exhausting and I always worry about her. Aging and adult care can assist you or your loved one to remain comfortably and safely in their own home. Contact them today to start the conversation. The Meat Shop in Chelan has all the meats, homemade side dishes, sauces, and rubs you need for a summer feast. The Meat Shop opens six days a week to serve you in downtown Chelan. More than a health food store, it's your good food store. Bear Foods and Cafe Crepery, a feast for the eyes and the palate. For the Chelan Valley's most unique tasting experience, visit One Wines, a true boutique winery producing only one white, one rosé, and one red with a rare exceptional vintage. Limited to 800 cases per year, visit One Wines today. Hi, my name is Manuel Navarro, Chief Operating Officer at Columbia Valley Community Health. Patient safety is our top priority, including providing care that just can't wait. With enhanced safety precautions, we want to ensure you that we're able to continue providing safe and efficient in-person care at our clinic. From in-car check-in, ongoing screening, immediate rooming, your family can get the safe care that they deserve here at Columbia Valley Community Health. Wenatchee Power Sports not only has a new owner, but an all-new attitude to match. Speaking of attitude, check out the 2021 models arriving now. Polaris snowmobiles, ATVs and side-by-sides. Yamaha motorcycles, watercraft, ATVs and side-by-sides. KTM motorcycles and the latest edition Beta high-performance motorcycles. Coming this fall, a huge demo event featuring the latest and hottest off-road machines. It's all at the retune Wenatchee Power Sports, where maximum performance is a way of life. 3031 GS Center Road in North Wenatchee open Tuesday through Saturday. McNally and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, when I was a cop in Wenatchee for 20 years, I have to admit, <laughs> you know, I'm a junkie for TV shows, was then, am now. TV shows and movies. I have seen every hip episode of Hill Street Blues, every episode of Law & Order, Blue, Bub, Blue Bloods, and NYPD Blue. Now, I've watched these things so often that my wife thinks I'm demented. <laughs> and the one thing I've noticed about all these shows, the one common denominator is that it is incredibly easy to handcuff people on TV. I don't care what the bad guy is doing, fighting, running. As soon as they're tackled or thrown to the ground or pushed against a fence, their hands immediately go behind their back. <laughs> and then the cuffs are applied effortlessly. It's like a miracle. <sighs> Too bad it wasn't like that in real life. <laughs> this is Mike Mad Dog Baghdadi, and that's my opinion. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin Prosser, and this is my print shop, Color Effects in Cashmere. Color Effects offers screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing on t shirts, jerseys, bags, banners, signs, and more. With 30 years' experience, you won't be disappointed with the quality and quick turnaround times you will get at more than a fair price. Please call Color Effects. How do you know when it's time to go to Boswell's Furniture? When you know the look you love, the colors you want, but need a little design help to bring it all together. With Boswell's complimentary design service, Glenn, Buffy, and Teresa guide you until your vision becomes reality. More styles, more fabrics, and more choices of quality home furnishings fill Boswell's expansive two-story showroom so you can see it and feel it before you buy. Come into Boswell's and explore the endless possibilities of home furnishings. Boswell's on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. Green Motion e-bikes have rolled into Wenatchee. We've got fun, affordable e-bikes for the whole family. Portable e-bikes that fit right in the trunk of your car. 
fat tire mountain bikes plus unique vintage style bikes you won't find anywhere else get some exercise with pedal assist or just cruise up to 20 miles per hour with the throttle starting under a thousand dollars green motion e-bikes are affordable fun for the whole family green motion e-bikes is located right downtown on the corner of palouse and wenatchee avenue it's estimated that one-third of americans do not have a financial plan at D.A. Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At D.A. Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let D.A. Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Fifty-five minutes past the hour here for a Tuesday edition of Wake Up with Anchi Valley, this 15th of September 2020. In for Dan Koontz, I'm Eric Grandstrom. We'll get a look around the Valley View cameras again coming up in just, uh, oh, we can do it now. That's fine, Mer if you want to do that, Megan. Let's let's do that now, and then we'll talk about the weather forecast. Uh, yeah. Uh, boy, you just still can't see much. This is our cross camera provided by SkyFi Wireless Network from Local Tell. Uh, still hazy, still smoky, and still very, very poor air quality. In fact, the uh, the AQI this morning for EO, the Wenatchee Valley, 413, so that's still hazardous. Also 413 up on the Quincy Plateau. A little better in Leavenworth at 204 this morning. That's camera one. Let's go to camera two, and uh, yeah, you can see you get a little bit higher elevation. That's up on Badger. Uh, this morning and uh, much clearer. In fact, boy, in the, in the foreground there, it looks like it's absolutely cleared. Uh, so folks, higher elevation, enjoying better breathing conditions today. Uh, our third camera this morning, we'll take a look uh, down towards the <laughs> Columbia River. This is Pibus Public Market. And what you can't see there that you normally would is the Columbia River as it slowly flows past on a sleepy Tuesday, September morning. But you can't even see the river this morning. Uh, the uh, railroad tracks in the foreground there. Again, our SkyFi wireless network cameras available from local tell this morning. And our camera four this morning is going to take a look uh, further up uptown, not downtown, uptown, uh, as we look north on Wenatchee Avenue. Um, not as bad as it's been. We did get a little bit of rainfall overnight last night, as was forecast, but nothing measurable. So we're still about two inches plus behind where we normally would be this time of year. Let's take a look at that forecast now, again, from Patriot Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Thanks again to Skyfire Wireless Network from Localtel for providing us the camera views this morning. Uh, there you have it. Uh, hazy again today and 74 for the high tonight. We'll see a low of 64 with some cloud cover moving in. Tomorrow we'll be left with a little bit of sunshine if we can see it through the haze. As my dad likes to say, it's like looking at an onion through a gauze pad. <laughs> 81 are expected high tomorrow. 63 tomorrow night as we look into Thursday. Some clouds moving in later in the day Thursday. And look at that on Friday. We'll cross our fingers and hope that it's not going to be thunderstorm-ish, but just rain-ish and lots of it. We can certainly use a season-ending event, that's for sure, especially in the higher elevations in our forest. 73 on Friday for the high. The weekend will be mostly dry. And hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, the smoke from uh, the area will clear out with those uh, clouds and showers moving in on Friday. Highs over the weekend in the upper 70s, nighttime lows in the 50s. By the way, well, that's about normally where we should be this time of year. The uh, high yesterday in Wenatchee was 70, the low 57. Uh, normally we're at 77 and 53 for the highs and lows. Record high for today was set back in 1995 of 92 degrees, 40 the record low in 1969. Sun rose this morning at 639, sun will set tonight at 7. 11. We are at 57 and smoky here in the Wenatchee Valley. Now, speaking of the smoke, this is kind of fun from windy.com. This, well, not fun to look at, but this is good news anyway. As we look at the blob over the Pacific Northwest slowly shrink over the next few days. And then uh, you look at our neck of the woods there in Wenatchee in central Washington. Uh, by Wednesday, there it goes, slipping away, slip sliding away. Thursday starts to disappear. And so hopefully by Friday, with that cloud and rain sh showers that are moving our way, we'll be able to say, boop, we can breathe once again. No more hazardous air conditions. Hey, before we wrap up the show today, 
It is National Double Cheeseburger Day today. Uh, had a non-scientific poll online on our Facebook page, and I'm going to read the top 10 here. We, we had 32 different places that were suggested to get a burger in town. So everybody's very passionate about their burgers. Uh, the top 10, we had a tie for nine between Riverside Pub and Dizzy D's. Uh, eighth place on our countdown here, Larry's Drive-In. Seventh, Hot Rod Cafe. Uh, sixth, let's see, did seven tie with somebody? Uh, uh, Hot Rod Cafe, there you go. And Bernie's, formerly Buddy LaFleur's, uh, was in fifth place with The Rock. Uh, fourth place, actually a tie for third, went to Checkers and Rusty's in Cashmere. Dusty's was second. And the number one place to get burgers in town, according to you, Easy's Burger Deluxe. That's going to do it. Have a good Tuesday.